Obviously, we can't guarantee a fire is going to happen, but we can give you a pretty good idea of what it's going to look like if it does. It's evening, and everyone's gone home. The fire you've just seen was very real, even if the office wasn't. It involved materials which are typical of many offices. No special effects were used, and you saw everything in real time. But of course, our fire was no accident. 
It was set up and ignited purposely, then filmed by experts for your benefit. What benefit? Well, normally at this point, we might be obliged to give a rather needless warning, such as, don't try this in your office, and it sometimes gets a laugh. But by changing just one word, it becomes a serious message. By looking at why fires like this happen, it's possible to give advice on how you can prevent them. Our office fire had to start somehow. It was arranged so that an igniter, mimicking the heat from an overloaded electrical socket, caused a plastic bin and paper to catch fire. But other sources can't be ruled out. Damaged wiring, faulty appliances, a discarded burning cigarette, or even arson. So, our first piece of advice is easy, and it's about prevention. Don't use appliances with faults or damaged wiring. Don't overload sockets. Don't leave anything switched on unless you need it. And be careful with cigarettes, matches and waste paper. A quick walk around inspection at the end of each day would mean that most of these hazards could be spotted. You should also look for windows and doors left open. Every fire needs oxygen to keep going. Starved of oxygen, as it would be with all windows and doors shut, a fire like this becomes much less severe, more contained, and it's even possible that it will go out on its own. So, here's our next advice. Make sure windows and doors are shut when everyone's gone home. The people using our office haven't been too careful, as you can see. And after only 60 seconds from the first flame, a fire has taken hold. Although if anyone happened to pass the office, they probably wouldn't notice the fire. But there is rapid growth, and after only another 60 seconds, flames are reaching the ceiling. A passerby would easily see the fire, but is unlikely to be able to put it out. It's around this time that a fire or smoke detector would trigger. And this brings us to our next piece of advice. Make sure your office has detectors installed that not only have an alarm, but which are part of an automated system which calls the fire brigade. You can see by the speed and intensity of the fire how important early firefighting is, especially when you realize what's happening above our office. Flames have penetrated the ceiling tiles into the void above, where there may be other materials which could transmit the fire. The risk to other parts of the building, perhaps housing other businesses, is obvious. The potential for damage and loss, huge. It's still only three to four minutes since our fire started, and the severity of heat being generated can be seen by the smouldering and then spontaneous combustion of objects in the room. Watch the desktop. Flashover follows quickly. As flashover consumes everything in the room, it's appropriate to give our final piece of advice. And it's simply to remind you of good computer practice. Make regular backups of all your important data and store them somewhere else. If you are in any doubt, just consider this. Home office records show that about a third of businesses which experience a major disaster, including a fire, fail within a year. Which is where we came in. We asked you how you would feel if you knew a fire like the one you've just seen was going to mean the end of your job. Obviously, you'd feel pretty bad. But it doesn't have to happen. By taking on board the advice we've given you, you could be saving your job and the company. Are you up for it?